Hurricane Barrel is about to bring major impacts to Jamaica today, and then after this, it's going to make its way to the Yucatan Peninsula, where it'll bring even more impacts, and then after this, it's going to move into the Gulf of Mexico, where it could bring even more problems to areas between Mexico, Texas, and maybe even into Louisiana. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about Hurricane Barrel and where I think Hurricane Barrel will be making landfall. Will it be in Mexico, Texas, or even potentially Louisiana? So we're going to begin first with what Hurricane Barrel looks like on the infrared imagery right now, and this is still a relatively organized hurricane. Believe it or not, this is still a Category 4 hurricane, despite the eye actually not even really being visible anymore on the infrared imagery. You cannot see the eye hardly at all. It's actually kind of gotten wrapped around the eye wall. The eye wall is still very intense though. A really big reason why we are seeing this eye not really visible anymore is because the wind shear is actually around 25 to 30 knots around this hurricane, and as this continues to move to the west, it's going to be entering a very hostile environment where the wind shear is going to be even stronger. Though the energy in this area is really high, the wind shear should be able to compensate for that, and the wind shear should actually start to weaken this hurricane further as it moves towards the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, after this, things are much different. We are not really going to be dealing with as much shear in the Gulf of Mexico, and this could rapidly intensify, but that still remains uncertain. But we'll be talking more about the future possibilities here in just a moment. I also want to point out there's a massive massive convective blow up on the eastern side of this hurricane overnight last night so some big thunderstorms developing there we probably also had a few water spouts offshore so still a very organized hurricane for right now this is a much closer view on infrared imagery again notice you cannot really see the eye anymore that's where the eye is it's really getting wrapped in here let me just go ahead and pause this for a quick second that is the eye right there we got big thunderstorms that were developing on the east side of this hurricane earlier this morning again wrapped around eye wall so the eye wall is still very organized very healthy but notice the eye is almost completely gone. It's really just buried in this eye wall, which this means that this should continually to gradually weaken over the next 24 to 48 hours, but it is still going to bring major impacts to Jamaica no matter what happens here. It's still a really an intense hurricane. The winds are super high still. We still have maximum sustained winds near 140, 145 miles per hour, at least at the time of recording this forecast. And in addition to that, the wind gusts are well over 150 to 160 miles per hour. So this is going to continue to move towards Jamaica, where impacts are going to be pretty major over there today. Now, this is the latest National Hurricane Center update from the time I'm recording this forecast. Notice as of right now, the hurricane again is just to the southeast of Jamaica. It is expected to continue maintaining intensity, at least as a major hurricane. So it is expected to be a major hurricane, and it will likely make landfall in Jamaica. It's not a guarantee, but it is likely it's going to make landfall in Jamaica today. But at the bare minimum, we are going to see that eye wall, and that is where the greatest impacts will be felt today in Jamaica is from that eye wall where significant storm surge, very high winds and as well as flooding will all be possible. Now, after it gets past Jamaica, there are hurricane warnings in effect for those in the Cayman Islands. We are expecting impacts there. This will weaken a little bit more as it gets closer to those areas and overall, it will still be at least a high-end Category 2 hurricane. If not, it will be a Category 3 hurricane. By Thursday night, this is going to be approaching the Yucatan Peninsula as a somewhat weaker hurricane. It should be either a high-end Category 1 or a low-end Category 2 hurricane by this point and then eventually as it goes past the Yucatan notice it's only going to be a tropical storm by then as it will be interacting with lots of land now beyond this things are extremely uncertain right now there is a potential that this goes again to the north and northeast perhaps towards Louisiana there's also a chance it just keeps going west and it goes into Mexico that is basically best case scenario by the way because it would be over the Gulf for a very short-lived amount of time meaning that re-strengthening or rapid intensification is really unlikely so right now we are going to be watching this very closely, but the code of uncertainty is extremely large. This could make landfall in Mexico. It could make landfall as far to the north and east as like western Louisiana, for example, in a very unlikely but again possible scenario. It's not something that we can rule out at this point. National Hurricane Center forecast lines up with a ton of computer models, and this is the spaghetti models. This gives you an indication of various tracks that could happen with this hurricane and where it might go. So you'll notice, again, it's a pretty large area right now. There's a lot of uncertainty beyond the Yucatan Peninsula. We do think this is going to make landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula at this point. So overall, the odds of this missing the Yucatan Peninsula are much lower. There are still a couple computer models that indicate that, but it's just outliers really at this point that are highly unlikely. Now, really what I'm going to mo mostly talk 
talk about here is where this is going to go after the Yucatan, because this is where the uncertainty really is right now. Notice again, a lot of computer models are at least some general agreement that this will make landfall either in Mexico or Texas. Now, there is still a chance this goes towards Louisiana. We really can't rule it out yet, because honestly, I think the computer models are at least a little bit behind on the placement of where this goes. I am still personally leaning towards this going further up to the north and northeast, somewhere here in Texas. That's at least what I think will happen. Despite this still being a very intense hurricane and it will probably weaken over the next few days, there will be some changes to the forecast between now and then because the hurricane is really intense right now, but as it weakens, it will wobble a little bit and change direction just a little bit. So overall, the intensity of this hurricane over the next few days will play a factor also into where this goes in addition to what this ridge steers this to go to. So there's a couple of things to watch for. I still think the computer models are a little bit behind and I think it's going to go somewhere here in Texas, but that is still something that is my forecast. Overall, it still looks like it could go towards Mexico or Texas, so you should be at least getting ready in those areas. There's no reason to panic or be extremely concerned right now because we don't really know what's going to happen yet, but we could end up seeing a hurricane in those areas. Now, worst case scenario is that this goes off here closer to like Louisiana, for example, and stays into the Gulf of Mexico for an elongated amount of time, allowing for the possibility for rapid intensification. Now, a lot of the ensembles are showing right now that it could intensify as it goes towards the Texas coast if it does stay in the Gulf of Mexico for in a longer amount of time. Notice a lot of these areas that are in orange and red, that would indicate at least a category one or two hurricane. So as of right now, if it does go into those areas, it does appear as if we would have a hurricane going towards Texas. Now, if this goes towards Mexico or even far south Texas, it is a lower chance that this does redevelop at least into something greater than a category one hurricane. Now, this is the latest intensity guidance on hurricane barrel. And notice right now, again, it's as a category four hurricane for the time being, but it's expected to gradually decrease into a category three and then eventually a category two hurricane. This is when it makes landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula. So most computer models on board that this weakens to a tropical storm or a very low end category one hurricane. Now, after that, things are relatively uncertain. The bulk of the models that bring this to a tropical storm really do not re-intensify it by much. And, and then eventually as it moves towards like, you know, Mexico or Texas, it really just remains a tropical storm or a low end category one hurricane. I honestly still think one of these computer models in here will be more right than not because I do feel like this will intensify at least a little bit in the Gulf of Mexico to a category one or a category two hurricane. I wouldn't rule out this getting to a major hurricane status if it stays in the Gulf of Mexico long enough and moves to the north, perhaps towards like Houston, Texas or something like that. Like that's something that's possible. Again, it's not a guarantee, but that's at least a possibility here that it could re-intensify to something like a major hurricane. I'm going to show you three different scenarios that could end up happening with Hurricane Barrel as this moves to the west. I want to start off by saying the Icon model, which is the first one I'm going to show you, does not even indicate the pressure being right, because the pressure right now is near 950 millibars. It's starting off near 970 millibars, so that's a big discrepancy right off the bat with this particular model. Nonetheless, I do think the path of this does make a lot more sense. As we go into Friday, this would make landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula. Eventually, as we go into Saturday, this moves into the Gulf, and eventually by Sunday, this moves towards areas like Texas, and the ICON model brings this closer to Houston, which is something that I think is a very strong possibility that happens. I think it's going to make landfall in Texas, as I mentioned before, so I'm a bit more biased towards this particular model, but it does show that going towards Houston. That is one scenario that could happen, and this one would be less of a flooding concern if it does go a bit faster, which this one's showing it a bit faster going towards Texas, so flooding would at least be somewhat of a lower chance, even though it would still definitely be up there, as it is a pretty potent hurricane. This is the European model, which also has another discrepancy. Again, notice 980 millibars. Once again, it's at 950, so this model also does not show this correct. But as it goes towards the Yucatan, it does show it as a tropical storm or hurricane as it approaches those areas. Again, it's already showing too high of a pressure for this particular system because it will probably be stronger there. Once we go to Saturday and to Sunday, this eventually moves towards Mexico, and that's where it would eventually slow down and weaken off into Mexico, which again would be predominantly a lot of rain if that happens happens, which would be leading to flooding and less of a wind threat and also less of an overall storm or storm surge concern. The GFS model as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico has this going towards Texas as we go into Sunday morning and eventually a landfall sometime Sunday night between Mexico and Texas as probably some sort of category two hurricane or so. So there are a lot of different scenarios, all of which have obviously differing impacts. So we're going to have to continue to watch Hurricane Barrel very closely over the next several days. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. We'll continue to post 
post updates on Hurricane Barrel. I will be away for the next couple of days on a quick trip for the 4th of July. I will still try to have some video updates for you, so just make sure you're staying tuned to the channel and make sure that you are subscribed down below.